Bipiri pi, bipiri. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Genius Brain. I am your wonderful host, Joe Jitsukawa, and I'm a David So. <laughs> and today we have again our favorite nutrition helping person who helps us make sure we lose weight. Make sure we kick pads. Make sure we break a sweat in the morning and keep our mental sanity. Nick the ear. Yep. Hi everybody. None of that stuff is true. <laughs> yeah. He also wipes my butt. Yeah, I do mostly that. I clean everyone's yeah. ass on the JK. <laughs> After we news shit, team. we bend over and we go. I'm ready. Yep. <laughs> I come in with a brown covered apron with my black gloves, and Perfect. I do what I need to do. Yeah, he gets the duty done. They don't yeah. even pay me. I'm just happy to be here. <laughs> I just want to smell your butt. Can I smell your butt, please? <laughs> oh, that's nice. Yeah. Immature. Oh, didn't I phone? Yo, so just just in case this fucking uh, the, the topic runs away from us again. <laughs> <laughs> so, yo, so there's a couple of topics that people want us to talk about that are that's just hot shit right now. I guess it's kind of already passed, but people wanted to know our opinions about it. Yeah. Just because it has to do with the YouTube community. Yes. Now, the interesting thing is like, I sometimes forget that YouTubers are celebrities, right? Like, yeah, it's even me. Yeah, like it's you guys are celebrities. You guys are you guys are bigger than some like actors and we are in the television public people. Eye, and people want us want to know about our opinions about some of the YouTubers that fuck up a lot. You know why? Because they like you guys a lot. They hmm. like you guys a lot, and they feel that they connect with you more. I than hope fucking, our fans like us. I know. Yeah, th that's the, the dumbest thing I've ever said. Your fans like you a lot. Yeah. <laughs> So the first thing that people wanted to talk for, for us to talk about anyways was the whole issue with this guy named James Charles. I thought that was Brett Man Rock when I first saw Yo, him. They, they kind of got that same steez and look. Yeah. I kind of like my, my fiance loves Brett Man Rock. Who and doesn't? She always, and she always makes me watch his videos. And I'm like, okay. Who does not love that fucking hilarious flamboyant I'm, I'm, gay boy? I'm gr he's growing on me. When he Bart said he wanted to fuck him. <laughs> yeah, that's tight. <laughs> That fool was telling Gio, he was like, watch out, watch out, Gio, because I'm a, he, Bart wants some of this Brett pussy. <laughs> that dude's got some glutes on him. I'll say that. He's got, he's got some glutes on him for sure. He's, he's fucking weird, man. Like he's, he's wild. He's definitely one of those like extra ass fucking gay people, but he does it so funny. It makes me laugh so hard. Because he's got attitude. Yeah, man. It's he's so that funny. Shit. His yeah. stories about how people like give him shit and then like he's in his car like talking shit about them. Those are probably my favorite ones. He's a good fuck, man. Yeah. Cause he's just like, cause I bet he gets so much like bullshit from a day to day yeah. basis where I'm like, yeah, dude. He had this know? one fucking video where he was like, I think he was like trying to pole dance or some shit. That's and, tight. And then behind him, his mom starts brooming. Like, <laughs> like I said, broom starts fucking cleaning the uh, cleaning the house. And he's like rolling his eyes, like, what the fuck? She <laughs> cracks me the fuck up. <laughs> get my sexy on and shit. Yeah, yeah that shit definitely wasn't planned. He was so irritated. That shit made me laugh so hard, dude. <laughs> he's fucking unapologetic. That's why I yeah. like that dude a lot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was telling Bart that, um, his dad, so his dad is like super into like WWE stuff. Uh -huh. And like, so all his life, like he wanted this son that would get into this WWE stuff. But then he's all like, yeah, but he got a gay boy instead. <laughs> <laughs> hey, both performers, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't fucking matter. He'd be like a diva, like the, the WWE divas. Yeah. yeah, but James Charles is like, he's a huge YouTuber, huge yeah. influencer. Um, I think he's known for makeup, first yeah. of all. Right. So what, what, what's, what's the term on the foot? Is it drag queen? Make, no. Is he a drag queen? Um, I think he's a makeup artist. Yeah. But I don't, I don't know if he's transgender. Yeah. I think he's, he's a gay dude that does makeup really dope. And he just does like the whole drag thing. Yeah. See, like, I, I don't know like what the right thing to say is, but I don't think drag is a bad word because they have the uh, yeah, they RuPaul's have, Drag Race. Yeah. Fucking Khalif went to that shit. He says dope. He went, wait, he went to the show or he's in it? No, he, <laughs> he went to the show. He, he was racing. Fucking dope. He was doing a drag race. Yeah, but there was this whole issue with, uh, I guess he's doing this tour thing, right? Now, mind you, I don't know what a makeup artist does on tour. Because I think when I when I think about tour, I think about musicians. I think about live performers. Um, but people have a huge issue, specifically his fans, with how much he was charging for his extra VIP tickets, right? Yeah, so he had a $500 um, VIP. And what that would get you is like access to be in the same room with him, be able to ask him questions, and the potential... To get up on stage and he does your eyes, like oh. your eye makeup. Okay. Yeah. How much was that? 
five hundred bucks. bucks. I feel like that's fair, right? And then he uh, had, yeah. It depends. I guess like so. I want to play both sides of this because there's there's right. there's the first thought is this number one. He's very famous because I think his main fame ba- fan base is really young. Mm. So yeah, they're like ten to fifteen year olds. And yeah. Oh, yeah. So five hundred, and there was another tier below that which was two fifty, and there was another one for like hundred, and there's another one for like fifty bucks, I believe, right? Which is very typical of most concerts. I, I'm not sure about the yeah. five hundred range, but oh no, if you're like Lady Gaga or yeah. like I mean that's actually kind of affordable yeah because i had uh what's it called because i wanted to go to a jay-z concert out in oakland right but his general admission tickets were like 200 bucks so when, when i saw those numbers i was like oh it's yeah it's it's kind of that i don't i'm not saying that i'm comparing him to jay-z but to, to some of these kids he might be jay-z right yeah so when i, I mean when he's I, got like what 17 million they or said, something they said 19 million. 19, 19 million subscribers that's like 10 jk news bro yeah like that's <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> Shit, man. He's fucking mad popular. So a lot of these kids were upset because they were calling him basically a crook because he just made these tickets so expensive. And I guess when they see that ticket price, they're saying that he's very money hungry and he's not really thinking about yeah. his fans a lot. So for me, like, I just didn't know. I guess like for me, it's more like how I see stuff like that is a product, right? You don't have to buy it. Yeah. Nobody's forcing you to buy it. And there is another option. There were options, right? There's still a $50 option that you can go to. And when you buy tickets to a lot of these concerts, you do have those options. You have the VIP tickets, you have yeah. everything else. And so like, as I mentioned, I, if I wanted to go to this Jay-Z concert with with Beyonce, it was 200 bucks for the general nosebleeds t- tickets. Yeah. And that's, I, I guess like that's, that would be the equivalent to what these people who are fans of James Charles yeah. views him as. Like, I understand the whole thing. It's like, yo, if you cared about your fans, you would make it cheaper. Yeah. And But there's still the other side to things where it's, there's a supply and demand and there are people who are buying out his tickets. Yeah, yeah I mean, you're not wrong in the business end of things, but I think when it comes to us YouTubers, we're not looked upon in the same way as Beyonce. Even if like, let's say PewDiePie. Yeah. Like someone who might even be bigger than a lot of artists just in following and mm-hmm. like all in, in presence and whatever. Right. But the difference is as a YouTuber, we have this um, personal connection, a- accessibility factor to it. Right. There's this down to earthness that we're supposed to keep. So like the reason why you would pay for Beyonce is because she's out of reach. So you pay that money because there's no way in hell you're, so, you're going to ever have a chance with that. But for a YouTuber, you still think, like they're gonna walk around and you can see them at the mall, and then they, they got yeah, their, their they got their start so humble, and they still record in their bedroom. A lot of these big timers, like they still record on like, you know, it's a full on set. Yeah. But they have this magic of personal space and small and everything, right? Yeah. Because like a lot of people are making the argument like, well, you know, your fans are ten years old. How are they gonna afford that? Yeah. But there's a lot of like child famous shit. Mm-hmm. Like and if you have money, you can go, go in ahead. like like pop stars and like boy bands and mm-hmm. whatever. Like 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 if you went to a Justin Bieber concert, like and then you wanted a fucking VIP and all that stuff, it's like you're gonna be paying a lot of money. Yeah. yeah. But I think it's the the accessibility part where they feel like, hey man, like I thought we had a personal connection. Uh, like, so they like, feel personally slighted over somebody that they actually really don't know. It's yeah. like all of a sudden you're bougie now because I've been following you since you were like chill. They almost feel, I guess, like in that kind of sense, I guess sometimes people feel like they have a direct hand in how awesome you are. So yeah. how like I was the one that made you this way. So how dare you do this to me? Sometimes, like maybe to a certain extent. Yeah. Without yeah. them really knowing that. It's like, yeah. oh, all of a sudden you're like this. But then you know what? You're you're also talking to high, mostly high school kids. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Like, like I would never hear a 25 year old adult say this yeah, and they if would, they do they're they're kind of stupid or they don't yeah. have a job because <laughs> they would yeah. just be like ah oh, I ain't gonna pay for that shit and they move on yeah. because how I I feel like it's like the market will play out itself right so if it's something that's really inaccessible and most people don't find value in it they're not they'll just be like mm, well fuck this right it's yeah. kind of like Apple products right yeah they're grossly overpriced for for a lot of their stuff, right? You could definitely get a PC that'll do stuff that an Apple computer will do that'll be a lot better that's like substantially cheaper. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is very well known. But they still have, there's a supply and demand for it. Yeah. And, and that market will balance itself out and people still buy it. Yep. So how I view some, so I, like I said, I understand both sides, but I guess like just to play the other side, it's kind of like, 
you guys also in that same aspect, how you have a hand in building him up, you also have that same way in tearing him down by not giving your dollars. Yep. So the best yeah. way for you to do it, which is be like, oh, I don't really fuck with this. Hey, I don't want to pay for it. And then yeah. once he sees like, okay, nobody's paying for this, then I'm obviously I can't do a tour at this scale, pay these amount of people for this to justify the price. Yeah. I think they know people are going to pay for it. They just can't afford it. So they're bitter. Exactly. They're like yeah. only rich kids can pay for this because there are going to be mm -hmm. rich parents that are like, yeah, I'm going to give my kid the fucking <clears throat> dream you know or like they're maybe they're not even rich but they're the type of parents that are like maybe they're middle class but they want their kids to have this like dream that they never had you know there's parents out there like that they'll yeah. fucking burn money on a plane ticket to go to disneyland have an all-out thing because they had a shitty childhood and they don't want their kids to do that shit so there's a lot of parents that will blow fucking money yeah so it's not the 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 the, the fact that the kids can't afford it it's like a lot of the kids parents won't pay for that shit yeah. so they're pissed because they're like why do you make it so inaccessible but also like you're talking to kids they don't fucking understand business right that's true because like I see it as like, well, it makes sense because I would personally charge a lot because I only I want to keep it intimate. Yep. Yeah. And then to make this worth it, it, it uh, like a win win situation, it's like imagine if you only want 10 people so you could talk to every single person and give them that respect. Right. So how do you balance that? And, and it's like she, he's also giving 20 free giveaway VIP passes to it to people in the audience. Yeah. So like. I think general admission was like ten, twenty dollars or some shit like that. It's like fifty bucks a month. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like so, so it's normal. Yeah. Fifty five. So, oh. so that's the Apologies. general admission, right? But he's giving twenty passes for free to 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 lucky members in the audience that could come to the VIP. Yeah. That, and then so like, I think that's pretty awesome. But then like, I, I see it as like, all right, you want to spend, you want someone who's gonna spend, not because of the money aspect. But then also you want to you want to make sure that it's that that your meet and greets are not two thousand people. Yeah, you want to make sure that you could talk to every single person there, so you could give them that respect and care. You want to do all this shit because what people don't understand is if you make it accessible, he's gonna be having a line of a thousand people, and then all he can do is hi, take a picture. Hi, take a picture. Yeah, that's all he can do. Yeah, it's just it's it's kind of weird, I guess. You know, sometimes I feel. When when these things blow up in a lot, I think James Charles is really young. I'm not sure if he's still a teenager, but he looks super young. He looks really young. Yeah. So I'm not sure. Sometimes I feel like for the, the best type of PR when shit like this happens is just for you to be fucking honest. Yeah. You know, don't say stuff like, listen, I try I guess like he put out the statement saying, Listen, I begged my team to make the make the Like prices. it's not his fault. Yeah, like come you on, that's bro. True? Like young man, just as a heads up, kids are dumb, they're not that dumb. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you, you literally beg. That means like you got on your fucking like you knees. You have no control over your own business. Shut yeah. the fuck up. Like you didn't get on your knees and go, <laughs> please, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, because the venue is going to be like, no, we never had this conversation. Exactly. So for for you to really just kind of face this type of backlash is for you to try to go into their world and explain it to them. Yeah. And if it doesn't work, you tried your best, and at least you were honest about it. Because yeah. I think a lot of the times when people try to like quench or just 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 douse these fires out, they do it in the way where they try to make themselves the victim. Oh, I'm the victim here, yeah. not you. Yeah. But it makes you look like shit. Yeah. You know because. You're already trying to make somebody who feels like a victim that now they should pity you. Yep. Now it's just like you're saying, fuck you to them, <laughs> you know? But if you said like, hey, yo, straight up, this is what it is. Like, this is a very personal experience. And this is, I believe this is what I'm worth. And yeah. if you don't want to support it, I completely understand. On the next round, I'm going to learn from this and I'm going to try to do it again. But on this round, this is what it is. If you guys want to support it, thank you very much. If not, I'm going to learn from this. And on the, on the next time I do a tour, I'll make sure that I adjust it for you guys. Yeah. yeah. Leave it at that. Move on. I mean... It, I mean, people think that's crazy. It's like for a fucking personal boot camp with um, Tony Robbins, it's like sixteen thousand fucking dollars, <laughs> and you're money. still there with a hundred people. Yep. Yeah. So I just think it's like okay, I remember I have to tap tap into that high school mind, right? Because yeah. I was into underground <clears throat> hip hop. I was like super counterculture. I was like all about underground shit and like fuck mainstream, fuck like capitalism, all that yeah. stuff, right? <laughs> And then I hated when my artist became mainstream mm -hmm. because it was like, oh, you sell out, dude. Yeah. Oh, dude, you're, you're so mine. money hungry. You yeah. fucking money hungry. Like, you're not a true artist, man. Like, yeah. what's up with that? But I'm not paying my bills. 
Yeah. I don't know what it's like to be like like yeah. broke because of me and I have kids to feed and I don't know what that feels like. All I think about is, oh man, you're not true to your art. You're fucking fake. And I bet you they're in that same mindset. Yeah, they're looking at this. Bubble. They're looking at James Charles and you're like, what happened to you, man? <laughs> yeah. You're greedy now, it's man. It's like sell out. It's like you don't need that extra money. You're already balling. But you know, this this is this is what it is. Cause I feel Hell like no, he's gonna I I tell everybody, cash if you could cash out, cash out, as long as it's not shady, cash out like a motherfucker yeah. and pile up your money and, and and think about for generations how to keep that money in your family. Yeah, and you know, when we first started doing uh ads on YouTube, right? And uh just like an Instagram post, originally one of the things that I made sure that I understood that, that people understood, and you know, a few people when it started off, they would say shit like, Oh, you're a fucking sellout. And I would always the same thing are you paying my fucking bills nope are you are you paying my bills right and have i not done enough to the point where before when youtube started i wasn't making a fucking cent and i still created content on a fucking tr- dude but majority of our fans are fucking awesome though oh no this is like a small oh, yeah like, there's a tiny yeah this is like one or two comments yeah. right and there's just a few people out there that just just want to hate you just to hate you yeah and so like i said 99 percent the because like i didn't even have to say that because everybody else they'll just fucking tr- they'll trash yeah. them for me right and yeah. so it was kind of odd it's like well so when you see commercials and you see everybody else do it you're just kind of like well they can make that money but yeah. then when i try to do this and my thing is i always give gratitude right i say and because like even on genius brain right yeah when we get these ads it's not just because we're doing the hard work it's because there is a fan base that listens listens to this you know yeah so like i always give thanks it's like yo because of you guys we get ads uh continue to watch us and support us thank you very much yeah and so there is i think when when a fan feels very disrespected in that sense when they try to say things and they make themselves a victim that's where you're fucking up Mm -hmm. because now you're you're being very disrespectful to them Mm -hmm. you know what i mean yeah so it's like they they kind of help build you up and it goes to this point where now you're saying like well boohoo me Nobody's mm-hmm. gonna nobody's gonna give a fuck about yeah. you like that, dude. Did Especially this, if you're crying and you're a fucking millionaire. <laughs> yeah. It's like the fuck. Yeah, who gives a shit? Did this tour already happen? I think it's going on right now. Dude, there was a clip on Twitter that cracked me up because this this young cat, number one, he can't sing to save his fucking life. And uh he went on stage and he was just singing to the crowd and oh, somebody no. wrote So it's like a makeup convention, music like show and a meet and greet kind of thing, I think. So did it sell out though? Uh, I'm not sure. Well, he has a tour, so I, oh, okay, I don't know how you, many venues you. sold out. But I think it's doing pretty well, well and people like, love him. You yeah, know? if people are going to pay money to go, you know, this kind of price to go see yeah. him, then it speaks for itself, right, at the end yeah. of the day? And yeah, I, I just saw that clip of him singing, and I was like, mm, you shouldn't do that. Just, 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 do the, <laughs> just Yeah, just paint, uh, you know, do just, the makeup. Just do, just do the makeup thing, homie. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah the, and the title of sing. the tweet was, uh, he goes, so this is what you paid for. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> That's what's up. <laughs> it's just fucking funny, dude. Yeah, just don't sing though, you know? Yeah, just, just don't know. sing. I think it goes back to that weird relationship that YouTubers have with their audience, right? Yeah. Like it's like you we are entertainers, but also like we're not supposed to violate that we are. Like we want they want that facade that we're like completely just a human being that just does this for the love of doing it. I mean, it's true, but there's a balance to it, right? Yeah. It's like Oh, I want you to do this, but I want you to remain like this humble, regular human being that doesn't become any successful or change. Like yeah. I want you just the way I met you. Yeah. There's there's this aspect of you know that YouTuber becomes very tangible, and sometimes it like I said, it's like that one percent that's very weird. There's always gonna be that one percent though, yeah, because they're complete idiots. Yeah, but what I personally love about our fans is our fans is like a little bit older yeah. than the average YouTube. So like. 10 to 15 year olds, I expect them to do that because we would have done the same. We would have done, we would have done it. Yeah. I, I did it and they don't understand like money and responsibilities yeah. and you know, I can't expect them to, yeah. but our fans are college students and above and maybe some in high school, but they're, but they're actually pretty intelligent. Yeah. And so every time there's a fuck face that says that, like the, I saw this one comment the other day, they're like, like, uh, they're like, they're like, Oh, all they try to, all they do is they, they're so fake. They just try to sell things to us. <laughs> really? And then, and then like there was a row of fucking comments, just people roasting the fuck out of this idiot. Yeah. It's like, well, what the fuck are they supposed to do? Like, how are they going to make money? Yeah. Like, how are they going to pay their bills? Like, 
this is just the this is the nature of how entertainers make money. Like we give free content, and you just give a free. You just you just take the time to watch the advertisement. Yeah, and then sometimes purchase it if it benefits you. Yeah, no one's forcing you to fucking buy anything. Yeah. This, I mean, I don't think that violates the trust at all. I mean, hopefully, I, I, like I said, most of our fans are great and they understand that. And the support is dope. Yeah. Yeah. I think, and dude, I mean, it got to the point where they got McDonald's attention and I got that deal, dude. I, know, I, I still didn't get McDonald's, you stupid. <laughs> You're on the radar, though. You're. I'm on your radar. I've been on your radar since day one, dude. They actually hit me up and I'm going to go up there probably Nick, you tomorrow. shut the fuck up. Yeah, yeah. You didn't get it yet? Oh, no, so crazy. Absolutely. Even Nick got it, I dude. I got it. I have 2,000 followers. They're coming up with a fight burger. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nick, Nick, you can't even post an Instagram post I on your shit. Five I have five subscribers <laughs> on YouTube, so watch your yeah. mouth, well, Okay, dude. well, you know what? Uh, let's put in the clip of Nick. <laughs> <laughs> Nick's no, 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 no. <laughs> Don't cut to that. Don't cut to that. His name is going to be Nick Donalds. Nick Donalds, baby. Come on. <laughs> you fucking penis sucking bastard. Yeah. yeah, you know what? And that's why they love my branding so much. Oh, really? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. The non existent like, branding. I hate yeah, you so yeah. much. I feel like our, our fans, they celebrate every time we get a brand deal. Yeah, because they're, they're mad they're like, supportive. Yeah, dude. They're like, fuck yeah. And then, like, some fans will just buy shit even though they already have it. Like, yeah. they would, like, Dude, there's some really dedicated like there's, we I fucking love our fans. So, Especially because I see the type of other fans that my other YouTube friends have. They're like geeks, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have the cool ones. I'm like, when we have our meeting greets, I'm like, man, we have like some of the best looking, coolest people. Yeah. It's like, oh hell yeah, dude. You know, that's probably the trust that maybe James Charles uh just kind of fucked up on a little bit yeah maybe that's 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 that little respect and give and go that they didn't really take so you think you you move too fast maybe i mean 500 bucks you know for you gotta know your audience yeah he didn't know his audience like i know my audience right like so there are certain so so this is actually something that i did recently i came out with um I came out with five different digital educational products, mm-hmm. right? One is basically a 30 day mindset program where, you know, it's called 30 days to freedom. It's completely free, be- but I was going to charge. I was going to charge, but I, I said like, no, this kind of goes against what I'm trying to do here. Like I did spend a lot of time building up this program and it's like every day I send them like a, a, a like a ten minute audio clip yeah. of different like life lessons and things for them to help shape their perspective in the world, right? And it helps them like basically at the end of the program you're supposed to have more of a awakening to have a better approach to life and mindset so then they can have the motivation to kind of go out there because I think a lot of people don't have positivity in their minds so mm-hmm. they need someone to say that to them right so um, if you look at any of my videos on my channel if you look at the link I have a link that goes 30 days of freedom so originally I was going to charge for that and I and then um before this product, I, I I realized that the problem that a lot of fans had is they couldn't find what their passion was. So uh. I created a program called uh, How to Find Your Passion, right? So I charged two hundred bucks for it. I I I had a you know about a thousand people that joined, right? Yeah. And then um, at the moment I was like, this is great, but my fan base on JK is a million. On my personal channel, it's like a couple hundred thousand or whatever, right? And I'm like, I'm actually not giving back to my fan base. So this goes against like what I'm doing, like they'll pay for it, but it goes against what the connection I have with them. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, okay, maybe I can do it in different ways. Like they'll come to my shops, they'll come to sip, they'll pay for those drinks. They'll maybe if we come out with the movie, they can pay for that. They could pay for other things. But if I want to really be teaching good things in a bad way, if I want to be somebody who is giving value to my fan base right this is just a thank you gift so i started releasing that out for free yeah because i thought that at the end of all of these programs i was gonna just charge different rates but i was like man it just felt it didn't sit well with me so it's like i think every every creator has to come to this kind of realization and and i don't think charging is bad for educational programs it just depends on the relationship you have with your fan base yeah kind of what you started with too and it just goes back to that point where you were saying like understand your fan base as well yeah man yeah Yeah, i I mean because if one day like let's say uh i want to create a boot camp right and Uh i want it to be exclusive but i want it to be like this like like 
a whole entire life changing experience where we stay at this resort for like a week. But to afford that shit, like for plane tickets, the resort, the all inclusive package, food, training, I want to hire like like different martial artists and 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 you know like speakers and stuff. And then so every day you get like a different type of um, kind of like energy and and insight, right? Yeah. If I wanted to create this program, it's going to cost a lot of money. Yeah. So then at that point, it might be a couple thousand dollars for this whole experience. But that's because I have to pay so much money to organize yeah. and put this together. You yeah. know, it's, it's kind of surprising too. Like when we, we don't realize the the, the ripple effect that we have sometimes. So um, I just came from Montclair St. University out in Jersey, yeah. Montclair University or whatever. Um, and there's, a, there's a kid that came up to me and, you know, when I was trying to lose weight, I was doing it for myself, mm -hmm. right? And then I just put out a few videos, like a couple of videos talking about it and speaking about it. Um, the end goal of that wasn't really for everybody else. It was more for me. And if something somebody took yeah. away something for me, it was great. But there was a kid who lost like 80 pounds. From Damn, you know what I mean? Crazy. I was like, what the fuck? You know? That's like half of me. <laughs> and, then, and there was another person too that was talking about how, like I did this, I guess this kid actually went to a, uh, a Q and A that I did, uh, a while back mm. somewhere else and then they took that advice and they came to this college to see me when i was in jersey and they weren't in college at the time but they decided to go into film because of what i did and i said well why did you go into film he was it wasn't because like i i'm a film guy it was just more like that was something that i was passionate about and i kept on trying to chase what everybody else thought that was that was good for me i decided to do what i want to because of what you you did mm -hmm. and i was like oh shit like there there we definitely do have this ripple effect sometimes yeah. like it's, it's not going to reach everybody yeah um, but when it does reach somebody, it's very nice yeah. because I'm and you know, when we get this advice too, it's because it's not because we know everything. It's just, no. we understand what it's like to be in your shoe. Yep. So, so it's you, basically we're talking to our younger self. Yes. hundred percent. That's all it is. It's like a therapy session. Yeah. Cause uh, it's, it's almost like, like you said, like we're challenging ourselves, but <sighs> we're just putting it out there. And it's a reminder and then, for us too. Yeah. And then it's, it's almost like we're just documenting and journal, journaling our thoughts out loud. Like, like this, like this whole talk, like what I was thinking five years ago is not what I think today, yeah. oh, you know, hundred percent. And then, but we let it, we just put it out there. Mm -hmm. We just put it out there and people see the evolution or they see the change. And I think from that, it's kind of like an example of uh, of um, maybe if they were in that mindset too, what things can be. So like, let's say if you're 20 years old, right? Yeah. And then you watch uh, a video of mine of when I used to work, how I used to look, what I had uh, materialist, like, like, like success level wise, like if you just m measure money wise or whatever, where I was at till where I am today, like they go, oh, wow, it is possible. And I'm not that different from Joe. Yeah. Uh, Joe was actually in a shittier place. He goes, maybe I can do it. Right. And I mean, like, I think the byproduct is inspiration, but I'm not an inspiration seller. Like we're not motivational speakers. Yeah. We're not like, we're not the Tony Robbins and things like that. Although I, I like those kind of things, but that's not who we are. We're just talking about life and yeah. just yeah. being who we are. So I don't know what the fuck we do. But whatever it is, the sometimes the the side effect, and it's a good side effect, is people get inspired by that, and I'm yeah. like, that's fucking awesome, just man. like change through osmosis or something. Like when we did the uh, the little workout clinic that you, oh yeah, that kung up. fu place, you yeah, guys yeah, yeah. About. yeah. Yo, that that was crazy because you know I knew we were gonna get a bunch of people. Like I didn't, wasn't expecting how many people that were yeah. gonna be interested in coming out because this is I'm not from that world, right? So I'm I'm coming from a completely outside perspective, yeah, and. Like to see how much you guys, how much reach you guys have is one thing, but then to actually see it in person and to hear these people talk about how like, man, I watch your videos every day and they're like being emotional and they're really like pouring their heart and soul out to you. Yeah. And I'm sure it's the same thing with you too. I haven't seen it firsthand, but I'm sure it happens to you all the time, messages, DMs, but it's kind of crazy to see how people respond to you and how much information they take from a video you may put up that you may not think that yeah. is going to help anybody really, but you see it increases tenfold. And all the comments I see on your videos are like, Oh my God, you helped me lose so much weight. Blah, blah. You inspire me to do this. And to see it firsthand is like a, a completely different animal in itself. And I'm just, I was sitting there with Jason while we were kind of fucking around, but like while, while we're hearing you talk and we hear everyone talk, 
like we were like holy shit this is this is a different animal mm -hmm. completely and to hear how much you guys impact these people on daily life it's like your jaw drops like you really have yeah, we, no perspective we get I, like i said i get shocked by it too you yeah. know i get shocked even more when they're like when a guy comes up to me or a girl like this was one dude he came up this guy was jacked he goes dude you're my inspiration i was like dude how fucking dare you look better than me you son <laughs> yeah. of a bitch you're I'm like dare. you're my inspiration now what the fuck yeah. you some muscles huh yeah i was like how dare you take my advice and then one up me you son of a bitch yeah, yeah. go eat a fucking pie yeah yeah get, get, get the fuck out of here yeah. all right unsubscribe now what what, what, what did you do <laughs> let me take a couple of notes real quick yeah yeah, yeah. Stupid son of a bitch. Yeah. Oh, but there's another topic that we have to get into. This podcast was brought to you by Audible, baby. If you haven't heard about Audible, my friends, you are missing out. Audible is where so many inspiring voices and compelling stories open listeners up to new experiences and new ways of thinking. Audible members now get more than ever. Members choose three titles every month, one audio book, plus two Audible originals that you can't hear anywhere else. Members also have unlimited access to more than a hundred audio guided fitness and meditation programs, my friends. We're talking about bestsellers, business, self-improvement, memoirs, and more. Even from people like David Goggins, which you guys know, I love David Goggins. That man actually helped me kickstart my fitness journey. So just remember people, explore all the ways listening on Audible can help improve mind, body, and soul with entertainment, information, and inspiration. That's really cool. So if you really want <laughs> one right now, you can start listening with a 30-day Audible trial and your first audiobook plus two Audible originals are free. So visit audible.com slash GB or text GB to 500-500. And my personal recommendation is Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. He did a lot to my for my education on finance and just basic, you know, saving and, and, and how money works. And I know it sounds boring. It's tough, but the way that he does it is, is he does it in the story and it, he makes it so real and personal. Cause he, he does this whole journey of like how he grew up with two father figures. He had his biological dad who was his poor dad, but he was only poor in finance, but he was rich in other things. And he had this rich dad who was actually like financially rich, but he was poor in education. But you know what? I'm already telling you too much. Just go ahead and start listening with a 30 day trial right now. I'm gonna tell you again, audible.com slash GB or text GB to 500 dash 500. And if you're watching this on YouTube, the link will be in the description box and you will see this immediately. Just click that. And you can see where it's at. Okay. Yeah. So within this whole YouTube community, there was another topic that people wanted to talk about. And this is other girl. We, we covered this on JK News. Yeah. Uh, she did uh, TanaCon. Yeah. Right? Tana Mojo. Yeah. So this, this girl... Very, very, you know what, hold on. Let me just go through this whole Wikipedia thing. So Actually, to, just to catch you up, Nick, Tana, Tana Mojo is this like uh, YouTuber that's pretty big. And have you heard of VidCon? Yeah. Okay, so VidCon's big ass YouTube convention, right? And um, they've been fucking up. So what she was going to do was be like, fuck that. You know, we're going to do TanaCon right next to VidCon. And we're going to do something that's, it had, they, she, had, she had great intentions, right? Uh -huh. She was like, you know, it's going to be all made by creators, for creators. She had a great dream, but she kind of like bit off more than she can chew because she just, you know, to, to, to put together an She's event. She's 20 years old, by the way. It's, okay. it's hard. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's hard, it's right? Tough. And it was a disaster. Yeah. Like a so, lot of, it was, it was, it was a big fuckery what's, so what's she her got, branding like what is she what YouTube kind of videos? videos yeah what she, does she put out I don't, the, I so think, I don't know what she does yo oh, let I me see. let me just yeah. read the Wikipedia thing it's just fucking hilarious dude I don't even have a Wikipedia so Mojo's most famous videos are her story time videos on February 10th 2017 Mojo posted on her snapchat that she was being investigated by the FBI after someone hacked into her emails and sent a bombing and shooting threat to the McCarran International Airport so that was her first yeah. of fam famousness and so in 27 <laughs> January 24th, 2017, Mojo posted a video titled The N Word. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, which has received. But keep in mind, though, she's like, why I should be able to say it. The yeah, but, and why but, I should but be able to say mind, it. the most famous YouTubers, they're basically, their fan base is like 
eight to 16 year old yeah yeah i see so, so yeah you're not really... like the egg videos like you unwrap eggs have you yeah. seen those videos so the That's edward which has received over 6.9 million views and over 300 thousand dislikes <laughs> Dude, if that's not an attention grabber, watch this one though. So in the video, Mojo <laughs> describes an encounter where a person on her tour, later revealed to be YouTuber iDubs, I don't know who that is, uh, told her to say uh, the N word, right? N I G G E R with a hard R oh. in response to a tweet posted by Mojo to iDubs telling him to kill kill himself for his comedic use of the N word. In his YouTube videos, on February 17th, 2017, Mojo posted a video titled An Apology for the iDubs drama, which has received over 3 million views. She's also known for a, a single debut called Hefner, which was released in November 2017 with Bella Thorne. Look at that. Uh, so she's basically known for a lot of, you know, just a lot of drama shit. Yeah. You know, but she has a huge fucking following. And so recently, her new drama, which I think, I'm, I'm, I'm even starting to think this shit is planned at a certain point. Yeah, it's got to be planned. Yeah, yeah. They've so been she, doing this since the fucking Pete and Bar, Bar, Barnum and Bailey fucking <laughs> circus. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no shit, they did that, dude. Yeah. She uh, so basically, she put out a post that she wanted a makeup artist. Uh, in exchange for their services, she was going to put them on blast in a good way, like basically, you know, promote them or some shit. And I guess how I guess a few makeup artists and a lot of people on Twitter were saying, well, you're what the fuck? You're just going to use and abuse people. You're you're why don't you just fucking pay them? Right. And it, it was a weird thing because this has been going on where people are feeling like a lot of these influencers are taking advantage of a lot of people's services because yeah. of who they are now. My take on this, I'm not sure how popular this is going to be. And I'm saying this um, as, a, as a business person, right? If I am a fucking nobody makeup artist, right? And I know this person has a huge following. And their opportunity is to, if I do a great job on this and she loves the way I do makeup and I become her permanent makeup stylist, I don't, I don't think of it as a singular job. I see, oh shit, she's not going to pay me, but I need this. This is so much. And how I view it is, I guess from my perspective is, I wouldn't be mad because no. the amount of money that I can make yeah. from being just associated with her and she is going to promote me on all of her platforms, that's going to open up 10,000 more jobs than this, right. just this one thing. Yep. And for her, I guess like if you want to look at it like this, there's a reason why companies, uh, obviously because you guys support us, but there's a reason why a lot of these companies come up and they pay people, people yeah. like us money to promote things, yeah. right? It's because we do have that reach. And if the product is dope, it reaches people who want to get it. Yeah. Yeah. So why wouldn't that work for somebody who works for her who she's going to promote? Right. Yeah. So the dollar value value in that alone is way more than that one job i wouldn't be surprised if she got a hundred thousand dollars for a shot out or a, easy yeah. Yeah. so like if a it's, it's so if a makeup artist gets paid her rate which is like what three hundred dollars or so in the independence you know yeah um i would much rather take the hundred thousand dollar value of yeah promotion which will bring me thousands of customers yeah because how many people would jump at that yeah because i think like in her right. perspective too like i don't i don't fucking know this 20 year old girl but how i would see it as is right. more like um i would okay fuck it i could pay you the 300 bucks for the makeup thing right yeah. but i sure it's fucking not going to promote you because i just paid you this money for this thing so it's a transactional thing right yeah, yeah. i think it, it'll be shady if she says yeah i'll promote you and then she gets the work done and then she never gets around to promoting yeah. that's that's yeah. fucked up but i mean if she's getting promoted then i'm, I'm like that's a better value and, way better and the and terms then, are set already the terms are set I would, from the beginning. I would rather pay a makeup artist. If I had a film on, I would just like, no, just do my makeup, dude. Like, yeah, I'm yeah. not gonna fucking pay. I'm yeah. not gonna give you a shot out. Who the Extra fuck are you? work. Yeah, so. <laughs> that's that's way more value. I might hate you so at people, the end of this. <laughs> I, I, think I might not like you at all. People don't see how important that value is. And a lot of the times we're not looking at the bigger scope of things, right? I Like, I understand that point of view. It's like, yo, makeup artists don't make a lot of money. We work hard yeah. for our shit. I get that. That's yeah. the, But you're thinking of it this fucking big. Yeah. So if you're a makeup artist out there, right? Let's say somebody like, I don't know, Gigi Hadid. She was like, yo, why don't you do come do my makeup and then I'll put you on a video, right? Now you can say on your resume, I did Gigi Hadid's May, yeah. yeah, and that increases your value. Uh, by and you can shit charge, done. you can Damn. charge more, way more. And yeah. on top of that, who's not to say somebody's gonna look at Gigi Hadid's makeup and say, "Who did your fucking makeup?" Yeah, that shit is trash. Because <laughs> <laughs> go. you know what's gonna happen? Uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, like I don't, I don't want to say just rich people, but there's a lot of people in this, specifically the wedding industry. Yeah, right. It's it's like just for that special occasion, you wanna you wanna say. 
oh, guess what? My makeup artist is the same makeup artist for Gigi Hadid. Yeah. And then like my my florist mm -hmm. is the same florist for fucking Jennifer Lopez. Yeah. Or like whatever they <laughs> they that adds value to it's clout, right? Yeah. So people will pay for that shit. But that's for because people don't understand business. Yeah. Yeah. When people don't understand business and they don't understand how this works they see it as like this okay so there are influencers that do take that take advantage of services oh, for sure for there's, sure because there's guys that walk into barbell with 1000 yeah. followers and demand a free day pass there's yeah. people like that all the fucking Not time even a free day pass a free membership all the time yeah there's, i did that there's <laughs> entitled influencers man God, all goodness. fucking day yeah. There's 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 people that will go in and and then they'll go into restaurants and be like, look at how many followers I got. Give me a free meal. Yeah. So I think like when Tana shows that it's like, well, at the it just it just it's a resemblance of that. Do you know how yeah. much how many you know how many followers she has? A shit ton, like a ridiculous amount. Enough to be millions. Yeah. Okay. Of weight, like super fucking high. Well, um, you know, I don't know why everyone's all mad. You know, and I I kind of I thought it'd be okay because but she I think was it goes back to it. the whole kid thing. Ah, uh, yeah. like age thing. I, I don't get it. Right? I doubt, man. If any thirty-year-old is saying this shit, it's probably someone that doesn't understand business at all. Yeah, it's like a, it's like some dumb house daddy or some shit. Yeah, mm -hmm. like I don't know, you know, yeah, like, like somebody that sits home all day and doesn't understand how the world works. Yeah, because yeah. a lot. Three point four million followers on Instagram. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fucking crazy. Because I wouldn't be surprised if, if like someone our parents' age said stupid shit like that. They yeah. just don't fucking understand. I know. They'll be like, what are you doing fucking around on, on video all day? Yeah. yeah. I know a lot of trainers or that train celebrities for free or they train like Instagram models for free just so they could put them on their page yeah. and, and, and they, they get a lot of fucking business yeah, that way. Of yeah, of course. And it's, it's just a step you take. Yep. It's better than a fucking billboard, we, you know? I still do that till this fucking day. Yeah. You, you, know, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I, I did a fucking film on my own dime. I made no money off of it. You yeah. know what I mean? In order to open up opportunities for something else. Yeah. Everybody does this. You may not hear about it, or yeah. if you're not doing this, you're yeah. pro that's probably one of the bigger reasons why you won't yeah. be successful. Yeah, you just can't be so entitled and think There's that, more like, things to exchange than money that yes. has bigger value, Way in bigger my value. opinion. Yeah, yeah like, like that's why people go, oh, free work, I get taken advantage of. But yeah. then a lot of uh you know successful like gurus and people always say like learn to work for free yes yeah. yeah like, like gary I, v that's all he talks about yeah right? learn it's to work for content free. content and, content and, and you know stuff. like when i read books like uh rich dad poor dad napoleon hill think and grow rich and just all these really famous popular like like um i don't i guess self-help finance yeah. books right a lot of them say the same exact shit, just in different ways. And one of the biggest points is learn to invest in yourself, learn to work for free, learn all this stuff, right? And it's not really up to you um, if you're entitled to that money at that point or not. The funniest thing happens when you are skilled, when you do have like this level of uh, reputation, mm -hmm your value just starts going up because people will fight for you. Yeah. In the film industry, everything, in every fucking industry, right? Yeah. Like, like you don't have to beg for a higher rate or anything like that. What ends up happening is like, let's say, let's say I'm a painter, right? And then like, you like my shit and you buy my shit. And then you tell your friends like where you got it. Now your friends want to come and buy my painting. Now I have too many customers and not enough paintings, Yeah. right? And I'm like, well, fuck. Uh, this takes me all day to do. Maybe I could just raise my price and then, but then it just keeps raising and raising. Yeah. That's the same shit with editing or anything. Like if you're a dope ass editor, right? Like, and then you just keep killing it and killing it. And people keep asking you to el edit their content. Yeah. And it's like, well, I have too much fucking work now. What am I going to do? I got to raise my prices. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 I guess like for me, I mean, it's cause we're on the other side, how I saw it was, well, well we're self-employed. Yeah. It's yeah, like, yeah, well, yeah. your day weight was like 300 bucks, but she's yeah. actually giving you a value that's worth like a hundred thousand yeah. dollars. So you're actually fucking, you're, you're cheating yourself. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like you're coming up like a motherfucker. And yeah. so I, you know, and the other side says, well, why can't she just do both? Who says she's obligated to do both? Maybe she doesn't want to do both because she feels like, like wait, so you're going to get paid $300 and you're going to get a, a free sh uh, shot out. Yeah. yeah. 
that doesn't sound like an even trade to me. It doesn't. Yeah. And, and either way, it's like, well, what? Why should you get both? That person who's gonna hire you sets those standards. And on top of that, she wasn't being sneaky about it. Yeah. She was very upfront. Yeah. She goes, "I want a makeup artist who wants who wants the publicity that comes with my brand." Dude, Fuck if, yeah, if yeah. I was, it to me. If mm-hmm. I was trying to make it as a makeup artist or anything, right? This is what I'll do. So um, I I I maybe work on weddings or things that give me paid work, right? If I need to pay the bills, or I could even get, be a waiter at the same time, mm-hmm. but. All the top-notch clients, I would fucking do my best, bend over backwards, give them yeah. all free shit nonstop. So yeah. I'm always there. I'm always fucking there. And then I become the go-to reliable person for every single fucking celebrity. And then they're all going to start fighting for me. Five years down the line, boom, I'm yep. going to be charging 30, 40, 50 grand every yep. single time. Dude, just some, just, just to... Bring it back to how maybe this would apply for me. When I was younger, I, I love photography, right? Um, I didn't know that all the free work that I was doing, just working as like a like just like a B side fucking uh, photographer for weddings. I didn't realize that that knowledge that I did for that free work yeah. that I did, and mind you, I got paid sometimes when whenever the money was decent. I didn't think that free work was going to help me out, but it did, right? Because mm-hmm. when when YouTube started transferring over to being shot on DSLR, a lot of film was, I already knew how to use this camera. That was the invaluable knowledge that I got from this. That right, was experience. It's, it's free practice. Yeah. It's it's more like serious practice because you're being pushed to practice. You're, you're being pushed to like keep your skill set high. And, you, and, and I don't know if... See, it's weird because it's like you could say free work, but it's it's still self development. You're getting yeah. better at whatever you're doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I would see it as investment. I wouldn't see it as free work. Yeah. I'm investing my time in developing myself, getting better and better and better because I don't think I'm good enough. Yeah, I don't ever think I'm yeah. good enough to where I'm entitled. And every deal specifically is an agreement between two people. What mm-hmm. you see is value. I could say, hey, this is my rate, three thousand dollars, and they could be like. Ah, uh, that's not what you're worth. Yeah, fuck or you. they could be like, I can't afford that, but I like your work. Mm-hmm. Would you take a thousand? And I'm like, well, I'm not doing anything that day. I'll take it. Yeah. Or if they go, I can't afford that. Uh, I, I, would you, or would you be down to do it for free? But like, maybe if you stick with me, you know, I'm gonna give you half of my business because you fucking went for the long run. Yeah, that's an agreement. Yeah, like, there's so much freedom. Yeah, to what you can choose to agree upon. Right. But I think like that is what people are having trouble with. Mm -hmm. I say this too, like, you know what? Burn that little bitch. If she said this (laughs) shit and then she didn't promote the girl. Right. That's fucked up. That fucking roast the fucking shit out of her. Mm -hmm. But at least give her a chance to fuck up first. Right. Like I said, I don't don't really know this girl. I don't. She's not in my YouTube community, you know, so honestly, fuck her. But yeah. From looking from an objective point of view, yeah. I think she's getting a lot of heat for no fucking reason. Yeah. That's how I feel yeah. about it. Like, because yeah. there's someone that's gonna do the job. If yeah. if you as a makeup artist sees that deal and is like, that's a shit deal, and to you that's bullshit, her DMs are blowing up with a bunch of people yeah. that are like, I'll fucking do it, I'll fucking do it. Yep. And yeah. at the end of the day, that's that's on her. But also don't have your own like con and name it after yourself. That's Yo, a little man, weird. And <laughs> this happens all too. Something even small like this, right? Number one, I there's a lot of restaurants that I support, right? So for example, I'm not saying I take a lot of credit for this shit, but there's a lot of like couple taco spots I blew the fuck up, right? Yeah. Shout not- them all out now. <laughs> in order to go. <laughs> <laughs> fucking, uh, what's it called? Tacos Ibiria. Like, oh, well, first of all, they were already yeah. big enough as it did, but I kind of opened up even a bigger thing. So they were telling me like, yo, ever since you did that video. We uh, see all these Chinese people over yeah, here. Yeah, a, <laughs> a bunch of fucking slant-eyed ching chongs are coming up and eat, eating up these tacos. But uh, I yeah. didn't know they like tacos. <laughs> yeah. and, and it's not like for me too, right? Because I did this video for them, right? And I only did it because I really fucking enjoyed the food. We gotta right? go back too. You know, and I did that. And you know, when I go back, they, they don't, I don't, they give me free tacos sometimes, yeah. you know, like I don't expect it, Yeah, but it's kind of great that that's how it worked out. Right. They, that give, was, they even give me free tacos. And you're a fucking nobody. <laughs> I'm nobody, dude. I just, I just was there. Yeah. No, but they're, you know, like they're, these things happen all the fucking time. Yeah. You know, in my case, I wasn't expecting that type of treatment, yeah. but yeah. it was, they were very appreciative and I was super appreciative that they even make the food. Right. Yeah. How, how good it is. So for me, I'm like, I'm going to highlight these people just because I like their food. Yeah. yeah. And I think also it's like right now there's a lot of artists that are being taken advantage of and Mm. you know no one ever looks at art as as work you know like like people always they they try to shortchange artists and then they'll be like um you know can you do this sketch of my friend 
Yeah. And then they're like, whoa, I thought I was just going to get it for free. Don't you enjoy drawing in the first place? Like, people say that all the time. And then they're like, <laughs> what? How come your paint or how come this sketch costs $1,000 when it only takes you 10 minutes to do it? That's like, bullshit. There's a lot of people that think yeah. this way because yeah. they don't see you know services and entertainment and art and things like that as real work yeah like to them real work is working at a paper company uh-huh. or a factory or becoming a doctor and that's just because you know they're uninformed and they, they live in a very small world yeah so yeah. they they think like oh well you're working your passion this is awesome like but why do you have to charge so much they don't understand the value yeah, yeah. and that's i think what a lot of people that are starting out and and they're struggling to be uh, artists or, or or people in entertainment or they they just want that respect but it but they they're struggling through that phase we all i think been there in the early stages right but once they get past that i think they'll learn so much more but there's a reason why skilled professionals in the art world or in entertainment get paid so fucking much like you know our our, our buddy darian yeah amazing photographer he gets paid he goes on a um like any car shoot or any any high fashion shoot or any it's 20 to fifty thousand dollars yeah for one day of work but it's like why well he he's able to capture this emotion he's able to do this he's it's like he's just snapping a photo but you know he did pretty much spend 20 plus years so you're paying for 20 plus years of this skilled profession yeah even though it's one day's worth of work yeah and that's what people don't make the connection out of there's definitely value in that too yeah. especially because we know what it's like to like just photography alone right videography alone uh cinematography these directors there's a reason why that they make this amount of money because they bring something very unique to the table that yeah. gives you value crazy mm-hmm. amount of value and I, I you know i understand i was on the other side too i didn't really get it until i started doing the work yeah and i started hiring people who you know they were cheaper and i was like oh this is what it should be priced but i always got shit fucking work from it yeah and i was like okay well this is what i'm buying i'm actually buying that like you said 20 years of experience yeah, yeah. and skill set that that these other people don't have there's a reason why they're charging less mm-hmm. first of all they're trying to undercut competition yep. but there's a reason why they're not getting any more jobs after they work yeah. with one job because yeah. then it's like if you pay cheaper it's there's more of a headache a lot of the oh, time you get what you yeah. pay for 100 percent. a lot it's the of intangibles the that you're yeah. paying for yep. and then on top of that it's like these Your big events yeah these big yeah. events that you want to be captured you only get one shot at it right yeah you yeah. don't so, want them to make a mistake and then they just fuck up and mm-hmm. this is just all shit and you're like all right what am i gonna do with it's this right bro? you don't want people to practice on you know things that are meaningful to you yeah. so why would you discount it's almost like this like you don't want a doctor to practice medicine on you yeah. out at a discount yeah. right like if you're sick you don't want someone that's just like trying to be a doctor yeah. you want to do that's been doing it for 40 years yeah oh for sure like you're not going to go and get your lasik done by a fucking two for one deal coupon yeah you know what i mean yeah. group on yeah, yeah. <laughs> you do a groupon fucking lasik yeah. thing good that's luck tight. being blind jackass <laughs> <laughs> you know the fuck they're lasers but, in but your young eye. young artists and and people in the service industry like entertainment and all that they also have to realize that the mm-hmm. competition in what they're doing it's fucking high. Oh, it's yeah. fierce. Because everybody wants this fun job, right? Everybody wants a dream job. So there's a lot of people that will do it for free. You can't yeah. get mad at the people that'll do it for free. You just got to compete. Exactly. That's just, <coughs> it's just how the world works. And those people are trying to get their reps in, right? Like a lot of the times yeah. these, these guys that are doing all this work for free, they're trying to get practice. They're trying yeah. to get better at their skill. And once they get really good at their skill, like you said, they yeah. can charge a higher premium. But until then, they know they can't do it now. And so. a lot of things in life, there's there aren't definites. And people want to be comforted by the fact that they like definite. So when yeah. they do a job, just to go back to the makeup thing, they go, I do job, I get money. And they like that comfort, right? Yeah, yeah they like the security. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And But there, but the there's this chance. They go, well, what if uh, nothing comes from it? You need to take that fucking risk. Yeah. And no matter If you're going to be a business owner, and I consider makeup artists and people who do their own yeah, thing like that. If you're self-employed, you're a business owner. Yeah, you yep. need to yeah. take those fucking risks because the reward versus missing out 300 bucks from one job to the amount of business that you get can get from this the reward is so fucking high that's what you should shoot yeah. for yeah. if you can't stomach that then being self-employed is not for it you it is not for no. you so it's it's just going back to how like we we have this bad stigma of millennials being like you want all the rewards but you don't want any of the responsibility yeah right like 
it's just going to be tougher. The reason why dream jobs and things like that, not everyone does is because it's just fucking tougher. It's yeah. just harder. Yeah. And it, like, for example, you think it was easy for me to just fucking drop everything I did on my channel and do this podcast? You know, like there was a model that worked really well, but in order for me to figure out, I mean, not, it's not, it was for me more to feed my self-interest, you know, it's like a balance. It's a yeah, balance. Yeah. You know, this was mainly because I felt that number one, you know, we, we would be on JK news and I don't, we never really get to fully explain ourselves. Yeah. So this was a way for us to do it. Right. Mm -hmm. So really elaborate on a lot of topics. Yeah. So, you know, there, there was a risk and I haven't, I haven't got the reward yet. But the risk I'm taking and understanding that there will be a great reward in the end. Yeah, of it. I mean, yeah. you're not going to get paid for like a year. Yeah. <laughs> so we're just basically doing this for free. Yeah. You know, but we're used to that. Yeah. That's you. You just get used to that kind of work. And I think the, a big thing about working is a lot of people are used to being an employee. Yeah. So, hey, I worked hard. I spent eight hours. Give me my Where's money. Where's my pay? And I don't blame them for it because that's mm. what they're conditioned to do. And that's the reality, right? But then if you do want to pursue something and you want to be your own boss, there's just a whole set of different rules that come along with it. Yeah. And you can't bring your mentality from being an employee into this because it doesn't work that way. Now you're your own boss. Now you got to. It, you, you're going to put in a lot of effort and sometimes you leave with nothing. And that's just the reality of it. Yeah. People but get scared of that. It's all perspective, right? Because I never feel like I leave with nothing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even when I get fucked, I feel like, oh, thanks. I'm yeah. glad that I learned about this. So then now, you know, when I am successful and I do get fucked, you know, I, I know what to do. Yeah. Or like, at least I'm not being jacked for millions of dollars. Yeah. You know, that's, like I'd rather be yeah. jacked for a hundred dollars now and learn my lesson than, yeah. than in the future where it hurts. That's so know? important. Yeah. And, and it's all about that ability to be aware of what's going on and being able to just stomach and swallow whatever the fuck just happened. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's, that's tough. And there's a reason why entrepreneurs only make up 5% of the population. It's, it's not for everybody for sure. It's fucking hard, man. It's really hard. There's times where I'm just like, I just want to work for someone. Yeah. yeah. I just want to clock out at 6 p.m. And that's it. Yeah. I, I want I want that. Like, I dream of that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's why I want to retire right now. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> but it's just not in our personality, right? Like, yeah. we, it just takes a special kind of mind and... Um, sometimes an insane, stupid kind of mind, a stubborn mind to do this type of life. And I'm not saying that it's better. It just depends on what your personality is. Yeah. Because like my mom, she's, she loves routine. She loves authority. She loves structure. Uh, she says, I would never be able to do what you're doing. It would terrify me and it would be make, it would make me sad every day. Yeah. But she loves working and, and she loves working with people one-on-one. -on -one. That's why she became a nurse and all this stuff. And it's like, if that's your personality, then embrace that. Yeah. And then just get a job. There's nothing wrong with working and being an employee. Yeah. But if if you're like us and you're just wild and you like to do 10 different things and, and, and you can't focus on one thing from the next and you just like always doing novel, new ideas and projects and you're all over the place, maybe an entrepreneur is good for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe, you know, like you just got to be a little bit of a crazy person, to be honest with you. You, yeah. you got to. Yeah. But, it, but also... If you do make that choice, you got to understand all the risks that come with it. Dude, working working through getting fucked over and not getting results is hard yeah. because it's very yeah. it, it's defeating, and it you have to you somehow down. push through it that is, emotion. Yeah. That's the that's the hard part about it. I think like when I when I would try something and it just wouldn't work out, I have to have like this undeniable belief yeah. that I have something to offer, despite the fact that the results. Results aren't before my eyes yeah. right yeah. now. Talk about anxiety, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like that, that's, you get anxiety from that type of shit. I feel like athleticism or like sports or, or, or any of these things, entrepreneurship, being an artist, um, all, I, I, I wish that the world would try to do that once in their lifetime yeah. or open up a Some business. Some form of it. Yeah. Because there is, not that many things in this world where you're forced to take a look at yourself and change and fight whatever is happening. Yeah. So like, for example, like even though we have social support, right? Like, like, like we could go through shit and we can look at each other and be like, yo man, help, help me out. Like we could talk about it. Right. And then maybe if we go under, we have each other's backs, but 
there is no there is still no feeling of like all right i gotta do this all by myself mm. if yeah. i have a job it's like oh work is fucking crazy all right i'm gonna try to do this but you know what i'm gonna just try to play hooky a little bit um and call in sick yeah you could call in sick and then the work will continue going. You could come back to the job and you're like, everything's there for you. Somebody still, maybe you know? sold it for you. Like there's, there's escapes, right? Mm-hmm. Um, not all jobs are this way, but like a lot of them are. Yeah. yeah. So, so you can kind of check out when you need to take a break, reset, come back. You can do it. But for uh, anyone that's an actor, artist, whatever, it's all on you. Yeah. If you take a fucking break, you can't. Yeah, Pe- people. That's get your a, life. People you feel like get a piece of shit. Yeah, <laughs> we. I mean, there were definitely issues where you know some some of our personal friends too. They've they've dealt with people who work within a company and they thought ahead of themselves because they yeah. got to play with mommy and daddy's money, mm-hmm. right? So they, there's a lot of times where people yeah. work for you and they go, well. I'm working here on the day to day, so I deserve more than you. Mm. It's like, well, that's kind of cool, but think about it like this: for us to have built this company to this point. Where you get to work this job, you get to take your paycheck. You're sick for a fucking week. Company still runs. Yeah. I'm dead. I'm gone. Company dies. Yep. Right. Yeah. So you had this comfort of creating things within this ecosystem, and you got to play with my money, my risk. Yep. Right. And you're not doing that. Yeah. That's that's the thing you don't realize, right? So mommy, daddy gives you fucking a hundred dollars for you to somehow try to make this into something better, but you don't have that hundred. Yeah. You don't even have the reach, the pull, or anything else. So without me. It just wouldn't work that way. And we're trying to develop a relationship where I respect you enough and pay you the right amount for it. Yep. But then for you to step in and say, well, I don't need you anymore. It's like, well, cool. Let's play this scenario out. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of young people that join companies or, or are friends companies. And then they're like, they kind of feel like, what am I? Why do I need you? And then yeah. they yeah. go out and try to build their yep. own business. And, and they, they fail. They, they fail. And you think about how yeah. much, how careful you spend your own money versus someone else's. Yeah. Like it's, you it's, see yeah. that all the mm-hmm. time, like especially with guys that are like I know a bunch of people that are trying to open up their own gyms or businesses, and you see it happen. Oh, all I'm reckless. The time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm a gambler, dude. I go hard. I go <laughs> yeah. in. Yeah, yeah. It, it's not. But to, it's, it's, it's yeah, yeah. But you're right though. If if it was someone else's, maybe you know, it, I would have probably dealt with it a little yeah, bit. Yeah, it's not to yeah. knock. I, I think like it's just inexperience too when, yeah. when people feel that way. That's why, like you said, it would be great if if people like that would go ahead and try to open it up themselves and that yeah. it would give them perspective because yeah. how they're It's think- a hard learning experience. Yeah. But I feel like people grow the most yeah. When it's yeah. when it when they face that, it gives you some sort of empathy, right? Yeah. It gives you a window into like, oh, this is what this person deals with on a regular basis. I can basis. empathize with the person that feels like they're they're valuable like that because yeah. you are valuable, a hundred percent, you are. But because you lack empathy and you lack experience, you can't you can't see outside of your bubble right now because all you see is your value, but you don't see the other value that's been given to you to allow you to flourish. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. yeah so it's I almost understand. like my boss has unlimited money. Yeah. What they don't tell you is. Hey, the company did bad this year. They didn't pay themselves. Yeah. But all the employees got paid and all the employees got to p- take care of their family. Yeah. But this year, his family was kind of broke. Yeah. Like yeah. they never talk about things like this. And um, I think, you know, the more we we have this Im- imagery of like um, bosses and, and top dogs as being like this greedy, rich person. But the majority of companies in America are, you know, they're, they're small companies. That's what makes the country run. Like, like small businesses, small small companies. Yeah. Yeah. Like midsize up to a hundred people. Like, and a lot of them are very invested with their employees. It's like a family. Like it's like they work hard together. We just get a bad, bad rep because of the big multinational, like billion dollar companies that does crazy moves. We know Walmart. Yeah, they're, 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 yeah, they so they 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 have this bad idea of oh you fucking one percenters yeah. you you yeah you CEOs all these guys so fucked up it's like oh come on man like there's a huge population of people out there that are good bosses and good company owners but yeah. you're you're tying them up with these psychopaths that yeah. are fucking the up the world you know that's not the same people yeah for sure dude yeah. i think i was balling i've been doing this shit on this fucking couch i do, <laughs> I, do, I, do I do i do wish one thing though so like when i was when i was younger i wish someone told me the difference between um effort and, ef- and, and effectiveness mm. so like so so a lot of us feel that hey man we put in a lot of fucking effort i want to be recognized for that through pay yeah. Right. So 
I feel like everybody should be recognized for their effort. Like if you fucking worked hard, everyone should be like, hey, dude, that was dope. Thank you. Or, or, or at least acknowledged, right? Yeah. 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 Like, 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 oh, that was, that was good. Good effort, man. But keep going. Right. But effort doesn't equal effective. Yeah. yeah. So, so for example, like I could be a very hardworking salesman, mm. but I could sell no cars Yeah. because I could, I could try and try and try and, and people just don't like me or maybe my sales like method just didn't work. I could sell no cars. But I could tell my boss all day, like, dude, you know, I'm in here before anybody else is here. And I leave before, uh, after everybody else does. It's like, cool, you sold one Civic. Yeah. yeah. Get the fuck <laughs> but the, my here. boss is still going to tell me, hey, you're not effective. Yeah. And mm. then you might start getting pissed at the other guy that comes in for one hour and he sells 10 cars. And you're just like, man, fuck this guy. Yeah, yeah. he doesn't work as long as he I do. He doesn't work as hard as I do. I mean, even in the stand-up comedy world. Yeah. They did that to internet comedy comedians. Yeah. Because they'll be like, Oh, I worked so hard. I've been I've been grinding for twenty years. I've been yep. doing yeah. these little bars for twenty years. Who the fuck are you? But the it's guy like that's funnier than you, you fuck. Yeah. But then internet <laughs> people use the internet because they're being effective. It's like, yo, I could reach millions of people. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I'm gonna put my content out there, and millions of people are gonna like me. And then versus look what talking happens. to ten people at a time. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's if people understand the difference between the two, they'll start to realize you want to become effective with your work, not a lot of effort. Effort's great, but mm -hmm. effort's not going to produce. It's misplaced. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Yeah. And it's on the individual at that point. It's on the yeah. shitty salesman to say, okay, this guy is selling 10 cars in one hour. Yeah. What the fuck is he doing that I'm not? Yeah. It's on that person. And yeah. if you can't do that, then you're not going to thrive as an entrepreneur. Yeah. That right? always works, dude, it's, it's especially goes hand in hand with fucking health, man. Yeah. Like people are like, well, I fucking, I run three miles a fucking day. How come I haven't lost weight? I don't know, cheeseburger boy. Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> Yeah. I mean, you ate 17 cheeseburgers, dude. Oh, dude. The, when people tell me like, oh, I eat clean. And then I'm like, all right, let me see your food log. Show me the food log. And it just shit. Yeah. Well, yeah. That, they're, they're just in denial. Then. Exactly. Yeah. But then again, in their head, they're just like, the oh, effort. like, yeah. oh, I'm, I'm doing great. Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. I'm working out, which is good, you know, but you're not getting X, Y, and Z because you're not putting in. You're just results. working. It's like working hard on the wrong shit and yeah. thinking people should recognize and you should deserve something for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. It's like, man, that's just not how the world works. Yeah. yeah cause uh, you're doing yourself a disservice and then you're going to be very stressed out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause I'm not going to run like three miles a day, you know, in my thing. Right. And then it's not like when I was fat, I didn't know the reason why I was fat. Yeah. I knew. I knew. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I did a lot and I enjoyed every fucking second. Of it. <laughs> you know, I fucking enjoyed it. I just, I think, you know, people just get defeated. Yeah. Just, just. Yeah. Cause it's like, I'm trying. So I could get it though. Cause I, I was there. Yeah. That's yeah, why I was it's, like, it's hard. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's so hard. It's like, I'm trying so hard. I'm trying so hard. You're changing yeah. your whole life. You're changing everything that you know how to do that you normally do. Yeah. For this, like this, um, it's, it's, it, you don't get immediate results. Yeah. yeah. So but the tough. sooner I accepted, yeah. Hey, it's all about being effective. Yeah. That's when I was like, Things okay, change. Yep. I got to accept that. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, fuck man. That was another hour. Come out. Bam. Boom, 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 boom. Dude. My ears hurt so bad. Why? Because we've been too loud. No, it's just like, Oh, right. Fucking, Cause you got cauliflower. Oh bro. My ears are like hurting. Dude, They're like sore. I'm afraid that's going to burst. <laughs> yeah. They're going to. Oh, it hurts so bad. I well, keep taking it off. That, that's our cue to, to end the episode. <laughs> Wait, what you say? <laughs> Shrink your fucking ears, you bastard. Well, I wish I had fancy headphones like you. But oh, these, these are, are actually pretty nice. Oh, these actually hurt more. Maybe you should <laughs> get earbuds just for this dude. Yeah. Oh, nah, God, I don't dude. know. Fucking princess. I'll be fine. I'll be fine. Princess. Anyways, sure. guys, <laughs> check us out on every single audio platform. We're talking about that iTunes. Give us that five star Spotify, everything else. Uh, YouTube comments leave below. Let us know about the topics she wants to talk about let us know what you think about the whole situation with the i mean just because like we're coming from a perspective of people who are business owners yeah we you, we see behind the scenes yeah, yeah so maybe what, there's something think? that we missed yeah. you know that's yeah i think that's pretty important because the audience has their own perspective and when they could write down in the comments it gives me a little insight into their world because i did lose connection by being a content creator yeah mm -hmm. i'm no longer just an audience member anymore yeah, so i am i'm an audience member i can speak from okay from so what point. so you're saying you know well just, you're an entertainer too you you're a professional fighter you're self-employed you you train people so i think most of those are wrong but yeah yeah i appreciate it. thank you yeah prostitute was right prostitute, sell ass yeah, you, <laughs> yeah. so we're gonna find a you little nick. dick on the side yeah. <laughs> nobody wants my services though where can they find you uh nick the ear 
on Instagram or nicktheear.com. Yep. Hit me up. Yeah, if you guys man. have any questions about anything regarding David's personal life, <laughs> I have access to his keys, his cars, all that stuff. And my buttle. Um, I will sell you guys his used underwear. Just DM me and we will make those exchanges happen. Yeah, they look like parachutes. And Joe too. <laughs> all right, y'all. We'll see y'all next time. Happy birthday. Bye-bye. Yes, sir. <laughs>